Well, hey, everybody. Hello, Out of the Park baseball fans. Hello, Out of the Park Developments community. How's everybody doing tonight? Rich Grisham here, part four of the Big Rich Machine. And of course, I am joined by the man who actually is making all of this, all of the decisions. I'm just pressing the buttons. Our good friend, Mr. Alex Murray. Alex, how are you, my friend? I'm doing good, Rich. I'm doing good. Hopefully my voice doesn't cut out too much tonight because I'm getting over a head cold. So um, if I suddenly mute myself, it's because I'm coughing to death over on right. my left side. So. Right. <laughs> right. And, you know, let's let's face it. I am overworking you. You're, it's, <laughs> it's the holidays. <laughs> and I got you coming on live streams. I've got you doing Out of the Park Now podcast, which will be out tomorrow. That's tomorrow true. morning, nice and early, by the way. Alex and I just talking about all the different ways that you can play out of the park baseball 20. So I am not helping by working you like a <laughs> madman during the holidays. And yeah, I'm 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 not proud of myself, but at the same time, I wouldn't have it any other way. And you know what? <laughs> Even when I'm sick, I literally was playing through the stream and looking back at what we had done and making new plans and strategies, even while I was like in bed. Of course. So, I'm devoted to you, Rich, and I'm devoted to this Reds franchise. So we've got a ton of stuff to go through today. Oh my gosh, so yeah. much, so much to do, and and we're gonna get to all of it. Uh, before we do that, though, I do have to mention, uh, you know, a couple of things, um, and one of those is that right now, as we speak, with just a couple of days left, out of the park baseball twenty is just five dollars during the Steam Winter Sale, five bucks, seventy five percent off. And that is no joke. And I know everybody watching this is already owns uh, Out of the Park Baseball 20. Thank you very much for that. Uh, if there's somebody that you know that you think might like this game, and as Alex and I talk about on this on the Out of the Park uh, Out of the Park now that comes out tomorrow, so many different ways to play this game, right? Oh yeah, there's and, just so many single player and even now multiplayer ways you can play this game and enjoy it and have fun. Yep. Um, and so we talk about that. So anyone, you know, who likes strategy games, right. Or who, who may have a passing interest in the sport, um, you know, that's the kind of, kind of person that, you know, if you tell them about out of the park baseball 20, they're likely to actually give it a shot if it comes from you. So I wanted to mention that. And of course, I also wanted to mention, um, that we have our, uh, perfect point sale going on right now. Again, this is only until 1 PM Eastern on January 2nd. So that's just a couple of days. Perfect points are on sale, so they're big discounts, uh, as well as historical packs are available. Um, so, it, you know, the historical packs only have are only available until then. They're not normally available, and they give you a guaranteed gold player as well as just a complete set of historic players. So, really good stuff for tournaments. Uh, really good stuff, uh, you know, to sort of fill out depending upon where you are. Fill out that rotation. Or, you know, get a nice DH or, you know, a guy who crushes lefties out. So many different <laughs> options in those gold packs. All right. So uh, let's get to the Reds. So I guess the best place to start, Alex, is just, uh, you know, a bit of a, a bit of a recap, really, of, of yeah. where we were. Um, so let's let's do that. Let me get to let me get to the right spot here uh, in the game. We're going to go to the the home screen here uh there we go yeah and if you remember from the last stream we did we had yes. made two trades at the end right um and we also reviewed some gaps in our lineups that we're going to have to be filling as well as in our pitching rotation i believe and we reviewed some arbitration offers and issues that we were looking into because we just wanted to be made aware of what the team has that's about to leave the team and need to be filled right Right. So, we, as you mentioned, we made a couple of trades. We made a deal with the Phillies and a deal with the Astros. Do we want to look at those for a second and just sure. review yeah. those? Okay. Let's go ahead and review those real fast. Just so anyone who didn't see the last episode knows what we already have done, in case they uh, look at our team and they're like, wait, where did this player what? go? Right. Exactly. <laughs> yep. So, here we go. We uh, There was a big deal uh, with the Phillies and a small deal with the Astros. So, with the Astros... Yeah. Right, we uh, we traded uh, Aristides Aquino, uh, who's a 25 year old right fielder, and we got Francis Francis Martez in return. And we did that yeah. because why? Um, mostly because Aristides is an additional outfielder that we're probably never going to have play full time. He's got some decent pop, but 
we don't know if he's a fluke or not. And the problem is that in our outfield, we already are trying to find new full-time starters, and he's just on the outside looking in. And also because Francis Martez is someone that the Astros have lost faith in. He's a former top 100 prospect, I believe. I think he was. I don't know if he ever was. I can't remember. I didn't say on his listings now. But um, he is one of the best pitchers the Astros have that we can get for pretty much dirt cheap. We can either make him into a starter like he's supposed to be, or we could put him into the bullpen and he would actually be a four and a half star bullpen pitcher. So he's got some good options for us. And then we uh, we went crazy and we traded a uh, a really young prospect, uh, minor league third baseman Reese Hines, and a 28 year old reliever Matt Bowman, who 28 in our world is probably ancient, unless you know it's a it's a particular spot on the major league roster. And we got 25 year old Trevor Betancourt, 25 year old uh, Luke Lethwich, uh, both pitchers. And uh, we got a uh, 23-year-old catcher, D.V. Grulin, and an 18-year-old minor league catcher. So two pitchers and two catchers, including uh, 18-year-old Edward, Edward Barboza in return. So you were very happy about this deal. Yeah, this is a good deal. Hines is going to be a little bit tough to, to watch if he becomes something important because he's got some really good gap power and yep. power. But his contact's not that great, and his ability to play third base is going to be skeptical at best. Mm -hmm. So, to be honest, he kind of reminds me of Michael Franco, who the Phillies also have right now. So, um, we basically gave them a younger version of Michael Franco, so maybe they'll try it again. Uh, Bowman is 28. He's two and a half star. He's a run-of-the-mill bullpen. We can easily replace him. Um, he'll be on a major league team, but we want better, and that's why we got Leftwich and, uh, and Betancourt. Both of them are two and a half and then three star uh, relief pitchers who are three years younger, each of them, and they have some development still left in their tanks to be able to do, and it just gives us just a couple more arms that are younger and potentially have more upswing in our favor. So it's a good deal for us. And then the two catchers both have um, above average to great catching catching ability at the catcher position. Grulon especially, if he develops, he can actually turn into a three-star catcher with good defense that's good enough to play at a major league level as a starter and some good enough pop that he could probably hit us 20 homers a season. So he's someone that I'm very interested in. Excellent. And we reviewed the gaps in the team and the arbitration offers. You know, anything that, we, that you wanted to mention about, about that that stands out before we, before we pick, up, pick it up where we want to go next? In terms of the arbitration offers, that's actually going to be the first thing we're going to talk about for this okay. new episode because there's an idea I want to pass by you. All right. Um, I like this. I love when you give yeah. me options. I love it. Yeah. Basically, Unless I make the, last... the wrong decision, in which case I don't love it. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be your decision. But yes. there are like two or three different ways we can take this team depending upon where we want to put people in the field. Um, so in terms of arbitration – I, the only things I can update us on is that Dietrich will not be traded to anybody. No one wants him mm -hmm. because everybody looks at his arbitration $7 million offer and freaks out. And I have tried so many different ways to trade him. Nobody wants him. So unfortunately, he's probably just going to become a free agent at this point. He's not worth it to anybody to sign. Um, and the minute he goes to free agency, he demands like $2 million. So... There's no way we should offer him seven, and no one else will pick him up and try to offer him seven. So, unfortunately, our chances of getting rid of him are pretty much zero to none, and that's what you should expect from somebody who had a negative war and you know is asking for seven million dollars. So, <laughs> lesson lesson learned to anyone watching the stream: if somebody's on your list and they are that poor and wanting that much money, just get rid of them. You could try to trade them, but the CPU is not going to like anybody with negative war, especially if they're asking for that much arbitration. Good to know. Otherwise, um, Finnegan, we might be able to still do a deal with Finnegan tonight. I don't know. There's not a good chance about that, but you never know. Maybe we can get away with sneaking him into a deal and then not have to you know, do any arbitration with him. Now, the one person that I want to talk about, and um, I guess we can – this will be considered also reviewing gaps in the team. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be Peraza. Mm -hmm. um, there's actually, I would say, a 50% chance we actually keep Peraza at this mm -hmm. point. Um, okay. Mostly because 
if Senzel's going to go to the outfield, the other options for second base, while I love one of these options, the other option is basically Eric Sogard. Eric Sogard's going to be a free agent. He's not going to sign with the Rays for the arbitration offer that they're going to do. Or no, he's actually outside of arbitration. And he wants like $10 million a year, which is a lot for a second baseman who's really not worth $10 million. The option that I'm much more intrigued about doing, and this is something that the Reds have actually done in real life, is they signed Moustakis. Right. And the more and more I looked at Moustakis, he's literally a perfect fit for the Reds. He plays second base, which means Senzel can play right field. He's also extremely popular locally, which means the fan base will be enthralled with that kind of a signing. Now, unfortunately, he does come with a draft pick compensation. It'll be a third-round compensation if we sign him. But the just overall ability to put him at second base or, and this is what we're going to go on tonight, potentially think about putting him at third base is very, very enticing. And you can get away with signing Musakis for about $15 million Um and he is a very, very, very good option. Now, here's, uh, here's, here's my question. He's showing yeah. in my save as the third baseman of the Milwaukee Brewers. Yes, he is. And I don't have the option yet to make any sort of an offer to him that I can see. So is that just because of where we are in the calendar? Because here's the yes. thing, Alex. If you're asking me if I want to get Mike Moustakis on this Reds team, my answer is yes. Yes, I do. If that's something you think that we can do. And it's something you think is a good idea. It'll depend on the last <laughs> the last optional trade okay. that we can look at tonight. Because All right. we're, we're, we're not going to cover free agency tonight. We have too much to cover right now in terms of just all the deals that we're going to try to do to, to get some new blood into the team. So okay. unfortunately, if someone's expecting us to get the free agency tonight, it's probably not going to happen. We That's might fine. get to we Setting. might them up to arbitration. Okay, we're not going to cover free agency tonight, so I'm sorry about that. That works. No, no, but, there's no need to pause. This is this is this is the detailed like this is going step by step, detail yeah. by detail. That's what we're doing on this series. Yeah. And, so that's great. And what we're basically trying to do right now is just set ourselves up for a successful free agency. That's what we're Got trying it. to get Perfect. to. That so, is right. Yeah, so there's a lot of people we can look at in free agency to think about. Um, I think one of our to- our, our prized prospects is going to be Moustakis. I-, I think he'd be someone okay. that would make a good addition to the team. Um, Corey Dickerson would make an excellent left fielder, and he would be an excellent number three hitter. Um, he's someone that I'm very interested in signing. If not Dickerson, because he's a little expensive, you can always go and get Billy Hamilton or Alex Gordon. If you want to move uh, Jankowski to left or put Alex Gordon in left, um, that would be a cheaper alternative costing us under $2 million to do that, which is a great signing. For um, second base, it's pretty much just Sogard, Moustakis, or Peraza. Those are the, really the only options we have that would increase our performance at second base unless we move Senzel back to second base full-time, which okay. would be a huge move because that means that – well, no – uh, no, that that is correct. Yes, that means that right field would be filled by a trade, and that's one of the trades that I want to talk about tonight sometime. So okay. we'll we'll get into that. Great. Um, otherwise, we are going to be trading Casali. That's just, he's just he's such a good trade piece that he right. is involved in so many optional trades of mine that he has to go. Yep. Um, for free agent options to replace Casali, we're looking at Jason Castro. And Stephen Vogt. And Stephen Vogt is not only a fan favorite, he's a little expensive, but he's also locally popular, which means that he's also someone else who can increase the fan interest, which gives us more ticket sales. And for new players for OTP who don't understand what the popularity does, the popularity of a player when he's added to your ball club will increase or decrease the fan interest. When the fan interest is high, you're going to sell more tickets and get more income, which is going to increase your um, your budget, your ability to put money towards drafts or scouting. And um, when it's low, you're not going to sell tickets, and you're going to lose money every single year. 
because of that. So you do need to pair up good popular players with people who actually are good players to begin with. So if you can find somebody who does both, which is basically Moustakis and Steven Vogt, then you're golden because it's a win-win at that point. Got it. So the only other people that I've been looking into have been pitchers, and that's very scarce, unfortunately. Pitchers are going to be very hit or miss. Either you're going all in with someone like a Cole. I did manage to sign Cole once for like $33 million a year, which is an understatement for what he should be making. Um, almost every single other simulation, though, he goes for 37 to 38, which is outlandish. It's just it's too much. Mm -hmm. um, the only other people I would think about would be Bumgarner if we wanted to really get a left-handed specialist pitcher into our rotation. Um, and then Kirby Yates is a highly tradable player in this game right now. Mm. Um, and then, of course, you have Dylan Batances as a free agent. Mm -hmm. And those are the two relief pitchers that I think would be our targetable relief pitchers who would okay. increase us a lot and someone that we should be aware of at the least. Okay, great. So w let's let's go to the next place to put the pieces in, in place to make that happen. Absolutely. So let's start with um, making sure that Peraza is getting an arbitration offer right now. All right. So we're going to go to MLB salary arbitration yes. and get Jose Peraza. So right now we are offering $3.2 million. Okay. That's fine. That would be okay. Um, depending upon what we decide to do in the next couple of basically next 30 minutes, mm -hmm. Peraza will either keep that offer and he will actually stay as our second baseman. We'll train him second base instead of shortstop. Okay. Or he will lose that arbitration offer because we found somebody better, which is optional as well, unfortunately. This is where the multiple like different versions of what we decide to do come into play. We have multiple Great. worlds, and whatever we decide to do is going to impact that immensely. So let's Super. start – with the first trade that is the easiest one to get away with because it's trading someone away that we don't even care about. So let's head to the Tigers. Okay. And what I would actually like to do is create all of these trades in the uh, trade maker mm -hmm. and then let chat take a look at it. Nice. And let you take a look at it. And then we're going to actually move on to the next trade before we make a decision about it. So you can observe all of my moves step by step. And then if something doesn't seem right or if you you know don't like a trade, I can change course. All right. Because we have four trades that I think we have to do okay. and two trades that are optional. Okay. Four so trades that we have to do. Four we trades. Have to do That's four fantastic. Four trades. Wow. And these are big trades. These all right. are um, you know, four or five players coming to us, two or three players going away. So the first one is to the Tigers, and we are looking to acquire um, a relief pitcher named uh, Jerson Moreno. Okay. And you'll probably have to go to the minor leagues, unfortunately, to All look right. for these guys. Because most of these people are going to be uh, double-A or triple-A players, most of them. All right. What was that uh, pitcher's name? It's going to be uh, oh gosh, Gerson Moreno. Okay. I don't know if it's Gerson or Gerson. Gerson? Hmm. I think he's there he is. Got squad. him. He's a yeah. closer in, with the uh, Lakeland Flying Tigers at the moment. That's correct. All right. So Gerson Moreno. All right. Yeah. So can I... you go ahead and actually go to his profile page? Yep. That's that. where we Just are so now. So I can take a look at him and see if oh it's okay. Yeah. So you can see he's going to be a high stuff, high movement pitcher. Um. If we go to his OTP uh, or, or his OSA ratings instead of the head scout, that's where um, that's where some of his extra ratings are going to come into play. If I can see the yeah, there we go. Yep. So that's the that's the Moreno we're hoping to get. Now right. that may not happen, right. but at the same time, it might. Pitchers are very flexible and very. Uh, they can go in different directions. They really okay. can't. But he's the first person in our trade. So we'll go ahead and add him to a trade. All right. So the best way to do that is if what? You go to trade actions. options? Right. Actions, Actually, yeah. trade and options. Just go to, yeah, trade options right. and 
trade for, for player. player. Yep. Very good. Okay. Okay. So we also this is going to be a five player trade from the Tigers. We're wow. also looking for uh, we're looking for Sergio Alcantara who is a shortstop prospect. He came over in the J.D. Martinez trade with the Diamondbacks. Okay. There were um, other uh, optional trades in which I grabbed Dawell Lugo, who was also involved in that trade, but uh, Alcantara has the better fielding and um, somewhat better discipline and avoid K hitting that okay. I like. So we do not want... Lugo, you said. No, no, we're not going to get Lugo in this deal. This is okay. going to be Alcantara. Alcantara. I'm trying to find him here. I'm not sure if I'm in the right he place. Be in uh, in double A, I believe. Okay. Uh, let's take a look here. And yes, you're right, Lobat. OTP multiverse. <laughs> Marvel does it hard enough. We're going to do it even harder. Why can't I find him? Uh, let's see. He might be. Let's see. Hmm. Triple A? He might be in triple A. That's actually true. Da, 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 da. What's uh, his full name? Oh, Sergio, Sergio. Alcantara. Yes, he's in triple yeah. A. So I'm guessing most him over, of these right? kids are going to be in triple A. So let's see if we can find all these kids there first. Okay. So we'll get Alcantara as well. Okay. We're also looking for uh, a Jason Foley. Okay. And he's a relief pitcher. Should be a closer, I believe. Okay. Um, actually, uh, okay. Trips is right. If you go to the prospect yep, list. That's what I just did. That I went is to actually a great advice right there. That will be much easier to work with. All right. So you, here we you go. Might, you can either sort it by last name or you can sort it by uh, stars. Because most of these kids are going to be at least two and a half stars or right. better. Yep. That's what I got. So I got the prospects list, and I got it right now sorted by potential. Yeah, so Jason Foley is, yep. I think, fifth on that list. We're also looking for Zach Houston. He should be the top of that list. He is. Wow. We're yeah. just going for their whole prospect list, aren't we? Oh, my we goodness. totally are. Oh, my goodness. And we're not done yet. We're also going to pick <laughs> up a starting pitcher. This is going to be Alex Fiedo. Okay. Which, if people remember that name, he actually was just drafted in the 2018 draft. So last year, he was the uh, <clears throat> he was the Tigers' first round draft pick last year. All right, two and a half star prospect. So we've got Gerson Marino, Sergio Alcantara, Jason Foley, Zach Houston, and Alex Faido here. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. So on our end, we are going to offer. We're going to start with Scott Shebler. Okay. And he might be in AAA. Let's uh, let's do the same thing with our prospects list. Um, Shebler's not a prospect, unfortunately. Okay. So he is. Where is he? Double A. He's a. He should be in AAA. And he's not a prospect, huh? No, he's twenty nine years old. And what's his name? He, uh, Scott Shebler. Got him. Okay. He's been right uh, he's been on the Reds for two years or so. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, and we get the different number or the different results on your end versus my end. Okay. So we need to see we'll make this deal work right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I was reading what the, our assistant GM said. Oh. <laughs> he, he's, he's, he said it's not improving us by a lot. It wouldn't hurt us. I think I, I don't, I don't really like your attitude, Dave Littlefield. Like yeah, the, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't agree with that, unfortunately. Yeah, you better, better, better improve that attitude. That's all I'm going <laughs> to say here. All right. So, did you? You said you wanted me to click the "Make This Work Now" Let's button. Make it work now. All yeah. right. Let's see what they want. They will take any of these players, and there's a bunch of them. I don't know if you can see them all, but uh, a bunch of our our prospects and or current players, including Sonny Gray, uh, Castillo. Uh, Senzel, Suarez, Trammell. So can you see the list that they are? I can, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, on my version of the game, I was able to get this trade with uh, just a minor catcher's prospect. So that's interesting. It's another uh, situation where the differences aren't going to line up, line up, so that's okay. 
we can adjust this trade. Um, can you add on to our end of the deal? Um, let me think. Who would we want to make in this deal here, though? Hmm. Can you add on a catcher from mm -hmm. our end? It's going to be uh, Ryan uh, Lavarnway, and he might be in AAA. I think he'll be in AAA. Yep, there he is. Add in Ryan Lavarnier, a catcher. Yeah, go ahead and add him for now. Okay. He's not going to make this deal work. Right. But I'd like to see... Okay, so that helped a little bit. So let's see if we can make it work again. Okay. We may have to do a little bit more than what I was able to get away with, but that's right. okay. Right. Okay. So again, there's the list of various players they want. Similar list to what we had. Yeah, they're going to be hard to, hard to do for this one, unfortunately. Okay. Ah, so we may not be able to get away with all of them, unfortunately. Okay. <clears throat> so if I had to take anybody off of the Tigers list, I would probably take off Fido. Yeah, let's take off Alex Fado from all the right. Tigers end of the deal and see if that makes them happy. Okay, they said they'll think about it if we submit it. Okay, what would it uh, cost us to make this work now? We just got to nickel and dime them as much yeah, as possible. a much larger list of prospects. Okay, good. And I don't know how you would want me to sort this, perhaps by potential. <laughs> or I don't think well, I can sort it. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not going to be sortable. It's going to be by, I believe, uh, last name is what it's yep. going to be by. Yep. <clears throat> So in this regard, I would probably offer them – let me see if I've got this one person on a second trade. Okay, this other person is on a second trade, but I would be okay if offering them here instead. Um, let's add on to the deal – actually, there was somebody else. Is there – are there two Lopez's on this? Uh, let's see here. They're on that list. Sorry. Yes. Yes, there is uh... – there is Alejo, I hope I pronounced that right, and Luis. Luis, the shortstop. Yes, the 19-year-old shortstop. Let me see if he's involved in any deals, because he's somebody that has been a player that people have liked. That's not Luis Bryan, is it? It is Luis Bryan. Okay. Yes. <laughs> he is involved in another deal, but that's our optional deal. So let's add Luis Bryan to the list. And the only reason why I'm doing that is because his defense is a 50 <clears throat> for a shortstop, which means that he's basically not going to be able to play a starting shortstop in the majors with that kind of defense. So he's shippable. Okay. Okay. So and be... they'll do the deal now. Yeah. So that would be deal number one right there. Okay. Okay. And that would give us a couple of good relief pitchers who are borderline MLB ready because most of them have um, at least one and a half star. I think Gerson has two stars and uh, Zach Houston has two and a half stars. Okay. And then Alcantara is actually a really good fielding shortstop and he has two and a half star potential, which is very good. All right. So let's think about that trade. We had to offer more than I was hoping for, but that's okay. That's okay. going to happen. All right. So let's mull over that idea and yep. let's move on okay. to the next trade that we have optionally available and, to and us. what's the best way? Because this won't go anywhere right now as long no. as I don't hit a complete if trade. So we, what's the best way um, to navigate to where we want to go next? So all you have to do is click the drop-down menu where the Detroit Tigers are listed, mm -hmm. and we can change the team and not lose all this work. Fabulous. You can bounce right back to the Tigers, Love and it. this all this setup will remain. Okay. With the whole entire, we accept it, just hit complete, and we'll complete it. All so right. Where are we, we going We want next? to move to the Twins. Okay. And this is the one that's going to be the most controversial oh, for you. All right. I like it. Um, Because this is going to involve a player we just picked up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it gets us some very good players. We're going to pick up from the Twins their number two overall prospect, Alex Kuriloff. Okay. So if you see him on the prospects list in the bottom right, you can just, I believe, right-click on his name there. And you should be able to just 
add him to a trade. <clears throat> uh, okay, I went to the wrong place. I should oh. have looked at the, the prospects. Uh, there you go. Who are we looking for? I'm sorry. I got the We're prospect. looking for uh, Alex Kirilov. Yeah, there he is. Got him. Yeah. Okay. All right. So got he's him. The big, he's the big meaty prospect that we want, and he would be somebody that um, could play mostly right field for the foreseeable future. And he is technically the 23rd overall prospect right now in baseball. Okay. So he's a big, big dude. Um, we're going to be also adding to the Twins side of the deal. So you'll want to go ahead and offer for Alex. Okay. We're also going to be adding to their side of the deal, Fernando Romero. We saw him in the last stream. He's their five, well, four and a half star relief pitcher who is a converted starter. Um, he's got pretty good prospects and he should be on the major league roster. Okay. Not the prospects. All right. Good. Unfortunately, he has been in the majors. So his prospect ability is, I think, removed. Now tell me this. Why would the twins be interested at all in trading a Five star potential guy who is 24 years old and already on the major league roster. Um, for Romero, yeah, <clears throat> that is because Romero does not have his third pitch, I believe. Okay, interesting. And I think we may have discussed that last stream, but basically, Romero doesn't have three pitches, which means that his ability to be a starting pitcher mm -hmm. are greatly diminished, um, to the point where it's he. His projected role is bullpen slash emergency starter. Mm -hmm. um, if that changeup does develop, he does become a decent starter. But okay. to be completely honest, he would not be able to compete against big league bats of only two good pitches. All Got he it. has is a sinker and a slider, so they're both off-speed technically pitches. Mm -hmm. He's a ground ball pitcher. <clears throat> Excuse me. But when you only have two pitches, it makes it so easy for you to be able to get hit and hit hard. Um, you know, that's the reason why Randy Johnson had to have a changeup to add to his arsenal, um, to his slider and fastball, because when people could lay off the slider and look for the fastball, it made it very easy for hitters to be able to hit them. But the minute that Randy added the changeup, just one more pitch that someone else wouldn't be able to watch out for, it made him so much more harder to hit because you had to swing at the slider. Hmm. And you had to be looking for one of those three pitches because he could pop a changeup in there and it would be a strike. So three pitches mean the world to a starter in OOTP. If you draft somebody who's listed as a starter, has high stamina, but only mm -hmm. has two pitches, mm -hmm. they will struggle. They'll do okay, mm -hmm. but they're not going to be as good of a quality as their ratings are going to show them as being just because of the fact they don't have three pitches. So Got it. FYI about that. Very good. Okay. Other people on this list. We're going to go back to the prospects list, and we're going to look for Nick Gordon. And Nick Gordon should be a shortstop prospect. He, might he be is. a little bit yep. down the list, though. There he is, Nick Gordon. Very good. Yeah, there's an there is an alternative world where we trade for Wander Javier, another mm -hmm. shortstop prospect, uh -huh. but we are we are not going to do that. Okay. Because it required us to retain a contract more than I wanted to. Okay. So the last person we're looking for is let me see if I can find the correct information about who this person is though. We're looking for a catcher. This is going to be Ben Rortved, I think is how you I don't know how you pronounce his last right. name, unfortunately. Right. Um, but I've got it listed on the uh, on the yeah. document. So yep. if you want to look up for got that, it. Ben. Perfect. Ben Rortvet, I believe. He's, I yeah. have no idea if that's accurate. Though. I, I don't know. <laughs> Rortvet sounds about right. He's another catching prospect who has decent uh, defending ability, mostly arm, but he can he has decent enough ability that we could see him develop down the road. Um, and, uh, OSA believes he can be a two and a half star prospect. So okay. good enough for me. If he can hit anywhere between that and the two star that our head scout thinks he can be, 
um, it's a good deal for us to add them on. Okay. So the people on our side of the trade are going to be – this is where it's going to get a bit interesting. We need to go to our AAA team, which you're already on. Mm -hmm. so right there. We're going to be adding uh, Clayton Blackburn, who is kind of our uh, <laughs> kind of our last hope for backup starting pitching staff. And if he's not on that list, he might be. Let's see, he might be in the majors right now. I'm not quite sure. He should have been in AAA, but let's. See. I don't see. I'm Let's not see. seeing him. Clayton. Um, he would be. Hmm. He might be in double A then. Okay. Hold on. Let me see if Blackburn's in double A when this happened. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see. Where was Clayton? I can just search for him. Why don't I do that? That's fine. Mm -hmm. We can see where he is located at the moment, at least. Exactly. He is in the Billings Mustangs in the Rookie League. Rookie League? Yep. Um. Okay. <laughs> that, that doesn't make any sense. He's a two-and-a-half star overall uh, starting pitcher, but okay, sure. He is going to be added to this deal, so we'll need to find him in the Mustangs team, unfortunately. Uh-oh, I think I lost the player that we were originally offering. Who was the first player? Um, no, this is the first player, actually. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so i got to go to the Rookie League, the Billings Mustangs. I'm looking for Clayton Blackburn. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Oh, boy. Hitting the wrong buttons all over the place. Clayton Blackburn. There we go. Okay, now he's in there. Okay, so Blackburn <clears throat> is one person that we're going to mm -hmm. add. We are also going to be adding, uh, and this is the one person that I'm a little skeptical about adding. Well, no, this isn't the major person I'm skeptical about adding, but <clears throat> this is someone else that could be good. On our major league roster, we're adding Robert Stevenson who had a very good year for the Reds last year, but he has some susceptibility to walks and home runs. And uh, that's a bit rough to get around. Okay. They're still very unhappy with this conversation. Oh, of course. Of course. They're not going <laughs> to like this until the very end. So we're going to save, we're going to save our big guns for the end and see if they like it. Right now. We're also going to add a second baseman uh, named Cash Case. And I feel really bad about getting rid of this guy just because of the, uh, just the, name. Of the name. The name is amazing, <laughs> Cash Case. Now, where is Mr. Case? All right, Case should be in, I think he'll be in, uh, oof, gosh, any of our rookie leagues, I'm afraid. Okay. You may have better luck searching for him in our pro prospects list. Right. Here we go. Second baseman, right? Yes. Cash Case. Yeah. Great name. Fantastic great name. name. Yeah. I wish we weren't uh, getting rid of him, but we are. Okay. Okay. So now let's bring out our big guns and see what uh, see what this does to this trade. So we are going to be looking at trading away our new closing pitcher, Carlos Martinez. Mm. Yeah. Because mostly because he costs us eleven and a half million dollars, mm. and um, he's really, so really good. He is really, really good. And who's gonna be him next year? That is the big question. <laughs> that is that is why this trade is gonna be the most controversial. Okay. Because oh, and they don't even like that. Okay. Can you retain 5% of Carlos Martinez's contract uh, and see what they think about that? Let's see. Five. Uh, where do I do? How do I? T there's, it is percent by default, right? Yeah. Yes, it is percent by default. So can you see what would make this trade work right now? 
because I needed to add only one more player to make this work on my end. Okay. <clears throat> well, you can and see one of we'll five players. Thinking. Yeah, they want. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Okay. All right. So they're not liking it as much as they liked it on my end. Okay. okay. All right. What we if we try, did 15%? We could try 15%. Let's try 15 Okay. The twins are a little bit um, touchy about money. Okay. Hmm. Still not liking that. They are not liking that at all. Okay. All right. The last person that I added was a catcher. Um, another person that was basically an add-on just to make the deal work for less money. Um, I'm kind of surprised that they want this to be so much higher on your end of the deal. That's that's a little strange. We could try 30 and see if 30 makes it any better. If that doesn't even make it any better. Nope, I still doesn't make it better. To... Okay. Still doesn't make it better. Can I check something real fast? Of just course. Just to make sure. Absolutely. Can we go to... um? Can we go to game settings real fast just uh -huh. to make sure if we can go to AI settings? Yeah, I, I, I need to verify that we made this work because the fact that we've had such differentiating trade results makes me a little curious. Now, it, it could be completely just based on the playoff performance of the team mm -hmm. and how well stuff did. Because, yeah, yeah, PSP is right. At this point, it wouldn't be worth trading for, right. for that deal. Right. Not for what we'd have to take on in terms of salary. So can you can you... see the settings. Okay, so it still kept it. Hit the. Um, can you hit apply changes now? Apply changes now? Yeah. I didn't do anything though. I, we haven't done anything, but I just want to make sure that we make sure that that was instilled into all of the GMs across the board, just in case that didn't. Because I don't think we did yeah. that the first time. No, I don't. Think and we then. Did. Can you uh, recalculate GM tendency based on these weights? Okay. Done that's and just, done. That's going to be my last ploy to see if this works. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now we go back to the screen. All right. Where am I going here? Yeah. So if we've gotten that tendencies applied, let's head yep. back to the trade screen. I don't think it'll make any difference. Which at that point, if it makes no difference, we're just going to pass up on that offer. Somehow I got it to work on my end, but maybe I was pulling different strings. I, I don't know. Yeah, let's uh, let me change if teams here back, real quick. Yeah. If you oh. go back to the uh, MLB transactions yep. <clears throat> and go back to player trade. Oh, yeah, you're oh, okay. right. Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah, and they still want a serious offer. Okay, so it may have been that, uh, and this is where OTP is so random because four out of five times they're going to say no to this offer, but that one time out of five where they either ran long in the playoffs or they went nowhere in the playoffs and they got a budget cut um, or they got an extended budget maybe. Mm -hmm. They accept it on my end, and then they won't accept it on your end. So I can make all of these guesses at what we can make, but, you know, this right. is where OTP is so good because it won't work on your version. So we have to go with the idea that, um, you know, that trade will not work for us, unfortunately. Okay. So we are going to not do that deal. So Understood. we will retain, retain Carlos Martinez uh, for the season at this point. Okay. Which is, which is okay because, to be honest, um, he's good. Not bad, but. Martinez is great, and we definitely have a need for closer. So oh. he fits that role quite nicely. Okay. okay. So all right. One trade that we have busted, unfortunately. It's all right. But that's okay. So let's move on to the next one. <clears throat> uh, now we're getting personal. Yes. Now we have to go to your Mets. Yep. Yes, and we, we do. Gotta see, we got to see if this trade will work as well. So when we get to the Mets, oh, the best way to get to the Mets actually is just to change on the right-hand side of the screen where mm -hmm. the uh, select the second team is at. Okay. You can just change the second team. That's uh, the, the team that's listed on there. Okay, And that's Good. a quicker way to swap between teams for trade. Okay. <clears throat> so 
We are looking to trade for a couple of players that have a first name of Steven. <laughs> or okay. I think it's – yeah, Steven uh, from the Mets. We're looking for Steven Nogasek and Steven Valenez. Okay. So let's see. What's the best place to uh... – What's the best way to find that? Here we go. Let's see here. Steven Nogasek. Yeah, this is, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Part of me would love to do this deal, and part of me is like, no, don't do not do that to my Mets. Don't steal from my Mets. Don't steal from my Mets. <laughs> All right, so Nogasek, who yeah. is with the Binghamton Rumble Ponies, we are going to trade for him, right? Yes, we are. All right, who else do we want to? Add to We're this also going to be adding, and you might want to go to their prospects list because all of these uh, five players, I believe, are prospects. Okay. So we can just go to the prospects list to get the rest of these guys. Yep. We're looking for Steven Valenez or Villanez. I don't know if that's how okay. it's pronounced, to be honest. Yep. 24 year old, three star prospect. Closer. We are, so two we're closers. Also gonna be, we're going to be getting a lot of closing prospects, which is good. Okay. We want set up people. Um, we also need to pick up Riley Gilliam. Okay. Who is, I think, a little bit better than those first two players. Mm. I think. Okay. He's higher potential anyway. Yeah. Uh, however, we're also going to grab that top guy. We're getting Bryce. We're just walking in and taking all four <laughs> of their top closer <laughs> prospects. Yes. Because they will give those people to us for dirt cheap. Okay. Well, let's do it. Who are we giving them for this? Um, we're also for actually this? getting one more person oh, in, my. This, in this deal. We're supposed to be picking up a – I'm guessing it's another catcher. I, I always do this with catchers. No, actually, it's a third baseman. Uh, Will Tofi, who is, I believe, in AAA. Okay. Will Tofi or Will Toffee, one or the other. All right. Yeah. Either or. Okay. So on our end of the deal, we need to find a pretty decent catching prospect of ours, unfortunately, mm -hmm. a guy called Luke Berryhill. Okay. And he should be 21 years of age, and he should be in our rookie system, unfortunately. So you'll want to look at our prospects list. Yep, I got him. Yeah. And that already, one for five, has Brody Van Wagen and saying, all right, I got to think about this. Exactly. Wow. So – we can give them one wow. pretty decent catching prospect, and they will be like, hmm, that's not bad. So now this gives us the option to throw a bunch of 40-man players that we don't want anymore uh -huh, on uh -huh. this deal. Okay. Because what we can do is we can give them all of the two-star players that are filling up our bench who we really don't want. Okay. Because they're just taking a 40-man spot. So we're going to add... Uh, if you go back to our major league roster, yep, we're gonna add Brian O'Grady to our side of the deal. Hmm. Active and roster. He should be a left left fielder. Yep, there he is, Brian O'Grady. Okay. We're also gonna add relief pitcher R.J. Alanis. Okay. And the reason why we're adding Alanis is because he's selfish. <laughs> okay. Don't you love an assistant GM? Or I'm sorry, not not selfish. He's unmotivated. Oh, I don't want anyone who's unmotivated on my team. Exactly, and he's bad for the clubhouse chemistry. Okay, so don't want that. He goes. Um, we're also going to be getting rid of uh, Kyuri Mella. Now I don't know if Mella is injured on your game or not, because I don't remember if that was the case. What's his name? This is a. Uh, Kiyuri Mella, oh, yeah. M-E-L-L-A. Yep, he's right at the top of the list there. Oh, he is injured. Yep. Mm. I don't think they'll let us add him on to the trade then. No, it won't. Because he's got, like, Tommy John surgery. <laughs> okay. Which is kind of, kind of disastrous for this deal. Okay, so the other person we want to add on to the deal then instead is going to be uh, a starting pitcher in our rookie system by the name of Alexis Diaz. And I'm hoping this will finish this deal, but we'll see. Uh, there he is, Alexis Diaz. There's a lot to like, according to Brody Wagner. Excuse me, Brody Van Wagenen. 
What's happening, Catch? So we can make this happen. Okay, awesome. So they now, would take it for just those again, four. David Littlefield, the deal does not make too much sense. And you it doesn't make for sense more. for him because we're getting rid of MLB-ready players uh -huh. um, for players that are not MLB-ready. Okay. Um, because we're getting rid of Alanis and Grady. Those are the uh, two players that he would prefer to see us keep. But mm -hmm. at the same time, we don't really want either of them. And um, okay, that's what I'm looking at in this deal is that those are two players that are just filling spots that would be much better suited for either a prospect or a new player that we pick up in free agency. Okay. That's our better option. So All right. this is trade offer number two that we can mull over and think about. Now, okay. personally, I think we could just go ahead and do this deal. This one is not consequential to our major league team in almost any way, shape, or form. Okay. And we get some really good pitching prospects for the bullpen. So let's do it. Let's, let's just, just go ahead it. and do this. One. All right. We are completing the trade. I am pressing the button. Go the trade it. has been completed. Any right. player we received have been designated for assignment or placed in our lowest ranked minor team. Please go to the team transaction screen and make any necessary roster moves. Should we do that now? Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, most of those players were not on the Mets' 40-man roster, and mm -hmm. they have not played in the MLB. Okay. So none of them are designated for assignment because mm -hmm. they don't need to be put onto a 40-man roster most likely. Okay. They may have one. I don't know. We'll check. We'll check okay. later. Okay. All right. Let's think about let's see what other deals do we want to look at doing here now okay let me bring up the big one right now let's do it actually let's do it right now let's let's let chat have a moment to to think about this deal we are going to go and if you uh click on the uh, uh if you click on the new york mets in uh in the upper right hand corner we are going to go to the boston red sox Okay, I like the sound of this. I love Fenway Park in December. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. I need you <clears throat> I need you to go to a certain person's profile page and okay. check on their contract status. Sure. I need you to go to Mookie Betts' page and Mookie look at Betts. his contract status. Did you yes. say Mookie Betts? Yes, we are going to look into Mookie Betts. MVP Mookie Betts? Yes, we are. I love the sound of that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I need to know, has he signed an extended contract yet? Uh, it expires after 2020. That's what it says here. Okay. He signed a one-year deal. <laughs> okay. All right. One year is for $23.2 million. Yes. In almost every single attempt that I have done, he signs an extended contract to cover him for the next year. However, normally he signs about a four year extension mm. for about $29 million, which is absolutely doable mm -hmm. because in real life, Mookie Betts is probably going to get like 33 to 35. Okay. Knowing if he, if he bounces back and has a pretty decent year next year, right? Um, he's going to get paid a lot. There was an opportunity where we would have traded Eugenio Suarez for Mookie Betts. Mm. Now, that is still an option if you want to look into it. Yeah. He has signed a year contract. I'm fine extension. with that. What? How, how much is it for again? $23.5 I think. Oh, gosh. We could afford $23.5 million. Right. So now, who are we trading? The idea... The idea was that we would have traded away Carlos Martinez to clear up $11 million in contract space. Mm -hmm. We would trade Eugenio Suarez, who also has a $10 million contract, and we would get Mookie Betts for free. That would be the idea. Okay. So it would have been <clears> – <throat> the deal would have been uh, Eugenio Suarez for Mookie Betts, and we would have needed to add on to our side of the deal – uh, alongside Eugenio Suarez. But we don't want to do this, or we do? We're going to look at it. We're going to okay. look and see if the Red Sox would even think about this deal at this point. So let's add Suarez to our side and see. They'll take it. Right off the bat? Right off the bat, they'll do Suarez oh for bets. Gosh! 
Are you offended I, by that? I, I couldn't get that deal on my end. <laughs> oh my God. I had to add Kurt Casali and a three-star shortstop prospect. Holy cow. So, Rich, big moment decision for you here. Who do you want, Suarez or Betts? Uh, now, do you want to fleece the Red Sox even more? Yes. Okay. And I like so the Red Sox, by the way. So this is not a personal issue. Oh, it's not personal. Oh, no, no. It's this just is, business. This is just real good business. Oh, my gosh. I, I actually can't believe they would give us bets for Suarez. I can hear you smiling, by the way. I can hear I, you smiling. I am absolutely, absolutely grimacing like a <laughs> madman over here. Oh, my gosh. I mean, even for a year extension for bets, um, because I'm pretty sure this avoids his arbitration year, I think, is what it does, because I don't think he's a free agent this year. Yeah, that's why I'm like, I, I'm actually sitting here wondering, like, I didn't think he was a free agent already. Like, doesn't, is, doesn't he already have a, 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 doesn't, isn't he signed for next year? I thought he was signed already. Yeah, I think they, hold on, now, now I have to know, because, yeah, I'm concerned that we're going to get fleeced instead, and I don't want us getting fleeced. Okay. That is, that would not be okay. So let me just make sure that we're not going to get a weird situation. What is Betts' contract situation right now? What is his contract? Okay, they avoided arbitration on Friday. This was back on – what was that? Sometime in probably November, I'm guessing. So they've signed him to a $27 million in real life uh, avoiding arbitration contract for next year. Okay. And that's probably just to appease him mm -hmm. because in all honesty, I don't think – I don't think he was making that much – no, he was making $20 million last year. That's right. I think they've avoided arbitration two years in a row now for him. Okay. Which makes sense. So yeah, totally makes is, sense. He's a great player. That is going to be a free agent last year. Um, and, yeah, we do have to report the stream for hybrid robbery. That is absolutely true. Um, uh, yes. Um. Yeah, this is going to be weird. So the problem is that I don't know what he's going to want in a contract extension. Now, the fact that they signed him for only $23 million is very promising because that means that maybe if we get him, we can extend him for like $27 million for like four years mm -hmm, or three mm -hmm, years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I like the sound so of that. The really good news <clears throat> about this deal is that if we trade for bets, we can then sign Mike Moustakis to play third base and move Senzel back to second base. And we don't need Peraza. So I'm ready to do it. Okay. First, before you do that, let oh, me... come on. Let me press the button. Before you do that, I need to know what we can fleece out of the Red Sox because we're not going to be a good GM if we're not going to fleece them at least a little bit more. Okay. We've got to see if we can get more out of them. So So David Littlefield he, says the same thing, by the way. So you and he oh, are on I, the same page. I'm assuming so. Um, because most, Mostly because Betts is going to be a free agent next year. Yeah. And the Red Sox are more than happy to get rid of him for a five-year contracted third baseman in Suarez. Um, now, that's going to hurt us at the third base position. But like you said, if we get Moustakas, then well, we, we can deal. Moustakas. we can deal. grab In fact, Senzel is actually a decent enough third baseman. He could play third base. I All would right. prefer not to. Like I said, I'm ready. Out. All right. So who else are we getting from the Red Sox? What okay, else are we getting? So, wow, I was not prepared for this. Um, <laughs> yes, okay. you are. You are prepared, um, my friend. Actually, I was, actually. I'm sorry. I, I do know have you're people prepared. to look at. Let's look at adding Durbin Feltman. There to the go. list. He's a closing prospect for the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> Loading up on closers. Yeah, we're going to see if he can be added to the list for free. He cannot. Not at all. They said, uh, not enough in there for me. Please not offer enough. a little more. What would make it work? What would make it work? 
a very long list of our alphabet alphabetically listed players, including Casali, who you've been trying to run out of town for a long oh. time. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Huh. Okay. Um. Oh, that's a very interesting list. I would not mind adding Casali to this list. Oh, I know you've got you again. You've had it out for Casali since well, the beginning of also time. Also, because Casali is going to be earning about two and a half million dollars after arbitration, mm -hmm. so we can save even more money if we do Casali. Right, and they'll take it. They'll take it. Oh gosh, I would I would take that deal in a heartbeat. Casali and Suarez for Betts and Feltman. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, that's it. Cardinal yeah. fan is calling the FBI, but we're doing it. <laughs> Boom. It's been done. Uh, I get an achievement. I get yes, an achievement for trading for an MVP. Look at that. Yeah. Love it. And Love it. Be so good. Now, our fan base is not going to like that we got rid of Suarez, but okay. they're going to love that we brought in Betts. Yeah. And our right field is going to love that we brought in bets because there's nobody out there right now. So the great news about this is that, yes, we can put bets into right field. We need to, we, we do, however, <laughs> need to look at what he wants for an extension because that is going to make or break this Moustakis, trade. Moustakis, right? Well, we want to be able to afford Moustakis as well. Right. So we need to know how much does bets want to stay here for more than one year because I don't want to get rid of five years of Suarez for one year of bets. And then we lose him. Yeah. Um, now we could, if he's asking for too much, we could let bets go at the end of the year, mm -hmm. at, give him a qualifying offer mm -hmm. and take the additional draft pick. Mm -hmm. But that's only if the season goes so poorly mm -hmm. that we're in like fourth or fifth place mm -hmm. and we're rebuilding instantly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we need to right click on Betts' profile page and offer him an extension and see what he wants. Oops. Oh, I've... that's right. He's already been extended. We can't do that. My bad. Trips is right. Trips okay. is actually right. Uh, because he just got extended, we can't offer him an extension to the extension. Right. Uh, we have to wait till free agency to offer him that. Death nabbit. That's going to be. That's going to be the worst wait I've ever had. <laughs> oh, the suspense is going to be killer until we hit free agency now. He's not um, <sighs> He's not on my roster yet either. Oh, so. he's been uh, designated for assignment. So if you go to rosters and transaction, right. <clears throat> he'll be on the uh, waivers and DFA list now. I don't want him to be on the waivers and DFA list. No, no, no. Let's go ahead and uh, put him on the main squad. That, that okay. seems like a good idea. Just All so right. that we don't lose him to the uh, draft five <laughs> by accident. Uh, I know that's the active roster. How do I get him? I'm on uh, waivers you can and DFA. Just drag him. You can drag him. From oh, the, he's down uh, here. Okay. Yeah, yeah he'll be in the DFA section. So you can just drag him straight into the active roster. Okay. Him and Grulon too, right? Um, Grulon only needs to be added to the 40 man. He will start the season in AAA. Okay. So drag Drew Gulan to the 40-man roster list. Yep. And then right-click on his player and demote him to AAA. Okay. To do. And the reason why is because we're more likely than not going to sign Steven Vogt or Jason Castro to fill a backup role. Okay. Uh, while Gulan develops. And I'm One sending him to AAA Louisville. To you AAA. Said, right? AAA. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right, that's where he is now. Awesome. Very good. Okay, so this is uh, turning out to be a very different stream than I was expecting it to be. This is very exciting. Um, so can I just can I just uh, can, can I just put uh, Mookie Betts in my lineup? I just like oh, I want to do that. Go ahead and revel in the fact that we just <laughs> fleeced the Red Sox for Mookie Betts. Where um, is he? How come I don't see him? There he is. So yeah, he's down by the bottom of that list right there. All right. I don't have a third baseman anymore. So we don't have a third baseman, but we, but we have, have the MVP. <laughs> but we have a person in right field who is amazing. Yes. Now, here's an alternative. Um, if you don't want to pick up Moustakis, we could go and grab Josh Donaldson. 
Oh. So now we're just that, going crazy, and I love it. Now we're getting extreme. Like that would be, that would be a world I didn't even explore possibility-wise, because I was like, Donaldson, we're not going to pick up Josh Donaldson. He's too expensive. But if you go back to your front office for a second, we need to take a look. Oh, you're looking up Donaldson. Hold on. Yep. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and take a look at Donaldson real fast. Okay. So he's not a great defending. Well, no, he's okay at defending. Third base, actually. Um, his contact is a little susceptible, and that's what I'd be concerned about. Um, he will be expensive. He's mm-hmm. going to demand about $20 million, and he's most likely going to give a compensation draft pick to the Braves, who are one of the top-tier people to sign Cole. So we really don't want to give the Braves too much of an advantage if possible. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. do you I just even I, I just thought about this. Do you want to get really crazy? I do. I absolutely do. Or I at least want to give it a thought, Can you know. Can you go back to our uh, our front office for a sure. second? <clears throat> How much money do we have? We have a uh, green level money, so we have 32 yeah. million available for free agents right now. Okay. So that's not bad. If we traded away Carlos Martinez and didn't keep any of his contract, and if we traded away Jose Iglesias, and if we traded away – who else was on my list of people that I kind of wanted to get rid of? Um, who else was the other person on my list? There was somebody else. There are three people who have high contracts and really aren't necessary for us to keep, but – there is a possibility that we could be in the bidding for Anthony Rendon. Oh boy. That'll 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 look good at third base. That you'd have Mookie be Betts in right field. You'd have Anthony Rendon at third base. We would you be know. in such a win now situation though. We would kill all of our budget. For okay. those two players. But we also have a loaded farm system now, thanks to some trades that we've made. We do have some farm system people to work with. That is very true. Right? I'm fine um, with going to win while also building my farm system. I mean, that, to me, sounds like the best of all worlds. That is true. Um, you know, that actually isn't a bad idea. Can you go to the salaries tab mm-hmm. really fast? Yep. Since we're going off the beaten track tonight, I need to... <laughs> I need to focus really fast here. Sure. Because the idea that Rendon, that's true. Rendon would extremely hurt our chances to afford a Betts extension. That is actually very, very true. Um, We would have to get rid of Iglesias. Galvis goes away at the end of the season. We'd have to get rid of Peraza, which I would prefer to do anyways, because we don't need to offer him arbitration with... um. But wait, didn't we just decide that Peraza was our guy? He's our guy. Well, he would have been our guy, but I would actually much rather prefer to have um, Senzel. Oh, wait, at... no, Iglesias is our guy. Iglesias is yes, our guy. Yeah, Iglesias is our guy at shortstop. Right, But right, Peraza right. would have been our backup second base option right. if we had to force Senzel to play right field. Got it. But we got bets for free, pretty much, which means Senzel can go play second base again, which means Peraza is not needed. Got it. Oh, Garrett. I think Garrett's someone that we wanted to get rid of. And then I have had different simulations where I get rid of Tucker Barnhart because he costs a little bit of money. And just that little bit of money can mean the world of a difference for our organization. But I would prefer not to get rid of Tucker Barnhart if at all possible costs. Mm -hmm, So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's assume that we're going to do maybe just a couple more small moves Mm -hmm. before arbitration happens Mm -hmm. so let's actually let's first let's go back to the salary arbitration page and let's withdraw the arbitration offer to peraza because we don't need him no more all right that has been done okay so peraza is gone now with this trade for bets and everything else that's happened I don't think we want to go and sign a left fielder like Corey Dickerson. 
for a huge contract because we can keep Phil Irvin instead. Mm -hmm. And Phil is going to be stomachable <laughs> is how I'm going to put it. Okay. Um, That's an interesting phrase, but we'll allow it. It's stomachable because I don't know if he will develop into what we're looking for, but he's worth the chance. Let's go ahead and do something on the fly really fast. All right. I want to, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to uh, offer up for a trade or ship somebody, uh, shop a player around. I want to shop uh, Scott Shebler, and I want to ship around, uh, let's do uh, Michael Lorenzen. Okay. Uh, I'm going to shop Michael Lorenzen. And uh, Scott Shebler at the same time. Okay. So if you right-click on Lorenzen. Yep. So got... you go to the shop a player. Yep. Lorenzen, and who is the other one I wanted to add and, to that? Uh, Scott Shebler should be a uh, uh, AAA player. All right. Let me see here. Should be our AAA player. Got him. All right. Let's go ahead and shop now. On those two guys and I want to see what people offer up because right. Shebler's not bad and neither is Lorenzen but I really don't want to offer Shebler a contract for arbitration and Lorenzen is going to be making a little over two million dollars which is a little bit of money for a two and a half star relief pitcher all right that's fair. So let's let's see if there's anybody on this list that uh, makes me interested. How would you like to look at all of these trade offers? Because there are a lot of them. Um, Billy Hamilton's going to be a free agent at the end of the year. I wouldn't go for him. Go ahead and scroll down past the White Sox. I don't see anybody on that first list that I would be okay. exuberantly interested in. Zimmer is not bad. Sensatella is not bad, but he's not exactly a full-on starting pitcher. Um, Aiken's not bad, but I don't think he's developing the way that the uh, Indians were hoping he was. Candelario is actually not a bad person. Uh, Heimer Candelario from the Detroit Tigers. Uh huh. He actually isn't that bad. Okay. Um, take a look at his page real fast and. Uh, let me know what you think about him. Now, we could probably offer different people and get him for a, G a decent, a decent cheaper price. Mm -hmm. But he would be an interesting third base option if we didn't want to pay for Mustakis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, now, I do, I do want to pay for Mustakis. I, 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 I like want to be clear. Yeah, I, I Trips like also it's thinks it makes sense as well. Now, I mean, at the same time. I would like to pay for Rendon. So, you know, there's almost this point where we almost want to look for somebody to replace um, a position that has a high-paid player so we can then get rid of the high-paid player mm -hmm. to make room for whoever we put at third base. That's more likely what we're going to do. Yeah. Can you take a look at Framber Valdez, the three-and-a-half star relief pitcher out of Houston? Yes. He had some major league experience last year, and he might be somebody that we'd be willing to make a move on. He didn't have a great time. <laughs> um, oh, gosh. Another of these Houston Astros starting pitchers who failed to be a starter, so they converted them to a relief pitcher. Yep. Situation. But he is more developed than Martez was. That's three pitches. Can we um, see what it would take to trade for him without using Shebler and Lorenzen? Okay. So if you go to his actions and trade for player, Okay. let's see what would happen if we could take away Lorenzen from that deal. Okay, so you just want us to have who? Just Shebler. And what team was Shebler on? Was he AAA? Uh, AAA. Okay. Scott Shebler. Could we get... Valdez for Shebler. It might be enough for them, but they have to think about it first. See what would make it work right now. 
I'm hoping that Lorenzen was an overkill. Pretty but... much any other player on our roster is what it appears. <laughs> oh my gosh, it literally is. Okay. Right. Yeah, I wasn't uh... joking. <laughs> okay. Um, so we can give them someone who's trash if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, so like Jay Acosta at the top of the list wouldn't be bad for a half star person that may or may not have any ability to play baseball. Right. However, um, how good of a fielder is Acosta? Uh, it does not appear that he is particularly good. Bad at first base and perfectly ordinary at second base. Okay, we can add him to the trade and make that deal. Okay with making this deal is because um, their person on the deal, Valdez, is a 40-man <clears throat> roster member, and they want to clear roster <clears throat> space. So let's go ahead and add Acosta to that trade, okay. and Shebler and Acosta for a ready-to-go relief pitcher in Valdez is a good deal. That's a good deal for us. All right. Sorry about that. Um, okay. Who was that? I lost. So that was, if you hit the make this work now. Right. It's going to be Acosta. He's going to be at the top of the list. Got it. And then, yeah, we can go ahead and do that deal. All right. That's, that's fine. That gets rid of one person who would, uh, well, it's an arbitration person. So we're not going to retain them anyways. So we get rid of them. The Astros can decide what they want to do with him. We may see him in free agency anyways. So we get a player for free. So I didn't see a whole lot of um, options for Lorenzen, unfortunately. So I don't think we're going to be able to get rid of Lorenzen for any kind of a uh, budget cut in that regard. So let's go ahead and head back to the salary arbitration screen. All right. There we are. Salary arbitration. Okay. So we want to go ahead and withdraw our arbitration offer. Oh, you did already. Good. For Peraza. Awesome. Yep. So Peraza, not going to be getting arbitration, and that's just fine. Um, and we're still waiting to hear back from Iglesias. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, can you go to your roster and transactions page? Because I think we're actually ready – to simulate a couple of days. Okay. Which yep. is kind of scary to say that, but I just want to verify two things. If you go to your waivers and DFA tab, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that nobody is currently DFA'd. Uh, Frambler Valdez is. Our new acquisition is. Okay, so we need to put him on the active roster because he's going to be, hopefully, somebody we can trust in our bullpen. Okay. That's going to be an interesting decision, but he's got potential, and I like that. All right. Okay, I need you to go to the front office, mm -hmm. and we need to go to the upcoming free agency tab again. All right. Because unfortunately, and this is one of the big things that I occasionally make mistakes on, when you trade for people before arbitration, <clears throat> especially minor league prospects, they will get added to this list, and we already worked through this list, and we don't want to lose someone we just traded for. So, for example, Francis Martez is now on this list. Okay. He has not been given a minor league extension. So we would lose him if we go to free agency right now. We would actually lose him. So what we want to do is sort it by demand because I need to double check and make sure that we don't have somebody uh, withdrawn All from right. the 40-man roster that we want okay. on the 40-man roster. <clears throat> All right. So let's see. That's only Shackelford, Lavarnway. So there's the one catcher I tried to get rid of in a, in a deal. Uh, Lavarnway is going to be a free agent at the end of the year unless he's put on the 40-man roster, which he's only one and a half stars. He's not that good. Shackelford, that's a debatable question, actually. We may end up putting Shackelford on a 40-man roster. He's a two and a half star relief pitching prospect. He's not bad. Um, 
I'll leave that up to you, Rich. What would you prefer to do about that? I he, don't. Well, go ahead. He's 30 years old. Right. And he would only cost us $832,000 That's... if we put him on the 40-man roster. It would be an automatic uh, extension. Yep. Is what this it would is be. Shackle, Shackleford you're talking about, Shackleford, right? yes. Yeah. Yes. No, the I other... mean, yeah. It's hard to, it's hard to, I, I, I don't, it's hard to say, it's hard to not do that in my opinion. It's hard not to because it's just one more pitcher that could <clears throat> make the Major League squad, could be a good impact. Right. And could be somebody that gives us not only a veteran, solid arm that's already developed, but he's cheap. Although Trips does say that with the pitchers we got from the Mets, you wouldn't worry about Shackleford and the exactly. roster spot is more important than his money. So exactly that sounds but, very authoritative, but but at the same time, eight hundred thousand dollars isn't much if we have to designate him for assignment down the road. Okay. And if someone else claims him, they take all of his contract on. So for right now, it's not a bad idea to add him to the forty man roster just to protect him from free agency. Okay, let's do it. Because so we, we do need to uh, end this segment shortly. Oh, yeah. So let's go yeah. ahead and do that. Let's Take go ahead and uh, if you right-click on him yep, <clears throat> and then go – or just hit actions. You can do either way. And yep. we want to add him to the 40-man roster. Exactly, Trips. There's no risk if we have to wave him down the road. So we'll go ahead and um, if you go to transactions – now I'm getting all lost here. Oh, so I'm actions. Sorry. If you right click on Shackleford and right. then go to transactions, the bottom of his, uh, right, bottom so, of his. So we're placing him where? We're gonna put him on the 40 man roster. Just, on the on the secondary, on the secondary, secondary roster. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Just making that, sure I'm doing that. Okay. That is all we have to do is put him on the secondary. Right. And that should retain him for the squad. Good. Now, if you head back. Real fast to uh -huh. that free agency tab. Yep. We do want to go ahead and do the actions, offer all minor league free agents, minor league contracts, just in case there's somebody that we missed so that got offer, added to that list. Right. Offer all minor league free agents, minor league contract extensions. Exactly. All right. I'm going to do that. One player has received a contract okay. extension offer. And that was just Martez. Okay. Okay. Can you go back to the salary arbitration screen one last time? I, I sure think can. we're actually good to simulate all the way up oh boy. to the salary arbitration date. Okay. I just want to double check to uh -huh. make sure that we're not going to offer somebody a contract we don't want. So Absolutely. Lonnie, Lorenzen, and Jankowski. Dietrich leaves. Peraza leaves. And Finnegan leaves. Awesome. I think we are good to go ahead and start simulating some days and – Make some progress. All right. So where do we want to go? Where do we want to go? <sighs> Let's just simulate day by day for right now because we're going to get a response from Iglesias pretty soon. Okay. And arbitration's on the 19th, which is in three days. Okay. So hopefully <laughs> hopefully we hear back from Iglesias. Oh, is that hit now? Let me see. No, it wasn't. More of our hitting coaches agreed, people yep. upgraded, updated, and everything else. All yep. right, so we need to simulate one more day. Okay. We're hoping and praying that we get this. Right. Uh, so today, this did, we did go a day, right? So now I just finished today again, right? Yep, just finished today okay. again. Okay. And I don't see anything yet on that. Oh, boy. This is going to get interesting. Okay. Here's the problem. Uh -oh. We may have waited a little bit too long, which is strange because I thought we offered him a contract real early on. Um, if Iglesias doesn't sign that extension mm -hmm. before I – don't, I don't know if we can wait till after arbitration deadline. I think we have until – I think we have until free agency deadline okay. for him to sign that extension. All right. But if he doesn't sign it, we're going to lose him, um, which would 
make us very, very upset. Um, now, that does, however, lead us into the question of, okay, well, we could then sign somebody else or even go to free agency and sign them again. Mm-hmm. Um, but go ahead and simulate one more day because we just got to hope and pray that he signs on arbitration day. He has not signed. Oh, no. <laughs> he has oh. not signed. Oh, boy. This is going to get interesting. Well, okay. that's just where we're going to have to pick it up next time, I think. I'm afraid so. We're going to have to see what happens with Iglesias. So that's where we'll start off next week. We'll be back on our regular time, our regular night. That will be Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, twitch.tv slash OOTP developments, right where you are right now. For those of you watching live on Twitch, thank you. And uh, for those who are not, uh, who, are, who are watching this uh, on YouTube, that's exactly where we are. Uh, any last thoughts real quick before we call this a segment, Mr. Murray? Oof, we got a lot more done than I thought we were going to do. I, Good. I'm still floored by that death deal. That's <clears throat> I was not expecting them to be as okay with that deal, but um, hopefully we can still keep Iglesias. I think that contract extension is still up in the air. I think he still has until free agency filing to make a decision about that. Okay. Um, the arbitration offer was just the qualifying offer, right. and we did not offer that to him. So I don't think he has any ability to decline it or accept it, and he just has the extension. So I think we're still good there, but just in case. <laughs> I will start looking at shortstop options for us. (laughs) Okay. Good to know. Thank you, Alex, for once again uh, doing such an amazing job of of putting all of this together. Uh, I cannot thank you enough. You do a fantastic job, and uh, it's a lot of fun to do this with you every single week. So thank you, sir. And thank you to everybody that was watching tonight. I appreciate it very much. Again, every single week we do this. I'm going to, by the way, I'm going to just go ahead and file save my game real quick just to make sure, you know, just to make sure everything is okay. Um, And I wanted to make sure, again, once again, that everybody knows that uh, right now the winter sale is happening out of the park baseball, 75% off, just $5. And by the way, if you love out of the park baseball and you haven't tried Franchise Hockey Manager 6, it's 50% off. It's $19.99. It is by far the best received franchise hockey manager ever. We are very excited about that. Um, it's getting great reviews. A lot of people picking it up, especially on the sale. So check that out. And also, Perfect Points are available. If you have purchased Perfect Points during the stream, uh, we can match that for you. Uh, they are on sale right now, deep discount, and as well as historical packs available um, with a guaranteed gold and a guaranteed every player is a historical player. Uh, lots of fun stuff happening there. So, hey, everybody, once again, thank you very much for being here. You are awesome. You are why I'm able to do what I'm able to do. And, uh, and for that, I cannot thank you uh, enough at all.